college is an immersive life experience that opens our eyes, expands our horizons, and challenges us to grow. It's a flat out culture shock and a healthy one. College isn't just about academic growth though. It also creates the opportunity for us to develop greater maturity and social skills. The biggest challenge I found was to learn how to balance everything that I wanted to do without sacrificing academic success. In effect, college is almost a trial by fire. Are you ready to start living your life on your own terms? Newsflash, on first arrival, I don't think I was. My first semester of college went somewhat well. Things were a little bumpy here and there, everything was new, and I mostly kept up. As my second semester approached, I was about to put myself under even more pressure because I had committed to YSU's baseball team and baseball season was coming. I originally thought I would have no problem keeping my grades high. However, college baseball demanded more of my free time than I expected. It was just like adding a strenuous part-time job that takes a rough toll on your body. This led to less time, less energy, and a poorer social life. I quickly realized that I was no longer in fully control of my time. This rude awakening came to a head while I sat on a bus for eight hours heading home from our first college baseball trip of the season. Knowing that I had two tests the next day that I barely prepared for, a pit began to form in my stomach. That uneasiness intensified and my heart started pounding. Self-doubt started creeping in my mind. I asked myself, how can I study for two tests while I'm uncomfortable and exhausted? And to make matters worse, I was also getting car sick. But I didn't give up. I read as many class notes and textbook chapters as I possibly could for all eight hours of that trip. Meanwhile, my teammates were laughing and talking and playing games all around me, making me wish I didn't have to study. And still, I tried my best to power through. I took the test the next day, brutally exhausted. And when the disappointing results came back, I was frustrated. I frantically studied for eight hours, missed out on all the fun my teammates were having, and I didn't even ace my tests. I wanted to be able to do it all, yet I was overcommitted. That goal was slipping away, and I didn't know how to turn things around. In short, I was at my wit's end. Sometimes though, necessity, or was it desperation, breeds innovation. One way or another, I had to conquer that problem, regain control of my time, because the stress of wanting to do it all was becoming unbearable. Something needed to change. Turns out, I was in good company. A recent nationwide survey conducted by FileMaker demonstrates that roughly 50% of college students say that they don't have enough time for coursework. And a whopping 87% of students say that better time management would help them get better grades. Reflecting on my past experiences, I identified that most of my free time was devoted to studying. Then I looked deeper. I started looking at where I was least effective with my time. You probably heard of the 80-20 Pareto principle. Applying that here, we often should focus on our efficiencies, the 20% of our studying efforts that get us 80% of our results. Flipping that script, I needed to look more closely at my inefficiencies. The 80% of my studying efforts, that was only getting me 20% of my results. In my case, I found I was least effective with reading and gathering information, primarily from textbooks. I knew I had to get better about how I studied, collected, and organized information, and how I spent my time. And I did. This deep dive in improving my studying habits reaped big rewards. And soon, friends started asking me, how did you learn to manage it all? How did you make it look so easy? And eventually, so many people had asked me that I decided to write a book about how I did it. Borrowing from my book, I'd like to share with you the key takeaways of my five-step process to, to study more effectively and efficiently in college so we can live more extraordinary and balanced college lives. Because efficiency breeds freedom and opportunity. These steps evolved throughout my college experience. They've been battle tested, student tested, and parent approved. They're easy and the results speak for themselves. 
to, to make it even more memorable for this talk, I decided to name this process GoAce. The more I used GoAce, the better I became at studying. I sped up my studying hours, wasted less energy, and achieved more success from it. It became its own self-motivating loop, and wanting to maintain the habit was automatic. Flexibility is key here. Adopt what works. People are varied, and everyone's wired a little differently. Start with the core ideas, then develop your own blend. Feel free to add and adjust your own twist to them that best suits you. The truth is, everyone should know these things. But how many students are actually actively taught how to study more effectively? Seems like some schools teach it passively. I'm here to offer a better approach. The first step is go to class. In my freshman year, whenever I missed class due to baseball, I felt the consequences immediately. I would have to triple my studying hours just so I wouldn't fall behind. In addition to the extra time commitment, my stress and anxiety levels skyrocketed. I knew if I could physically attend class, I would every time. In my senior year, I started helping others with their studying habits, test preparation, and understanding class material. The first question I would ask them was, do you attend class? You would be amazed by the number of students who've missed significant class time, then hope a few tutoring sessions would magically catch them up. And while I still offer to help, there's no magical spell that will recover from missed class time. Attending class is pivotal to success in the first step of our process. However, just showing up only gets us half the results. We need to actively participate and invest our energy and focus. Professors generally aim to teach most of the information that they test us on. So we need to actively listen and write down what they're teaching us. They're giving us the answers. Make it a priority. Go with the intention to process and absorb what's being offered. Other concerns can be dealt with later. Regardless of anything else we do, attending class so we can take notes is the most important process. It doesn't matter what we, else we do to improve our studying habits if we aren't present in the classroom. So go to class. The second step is outline your textbooks. When I first started opening my textbooks, I experienced a wave of unpleasantness. I was overwhelmed and angry imagining wasting huge amounts of time on them. Obviously, not the most useful mindset. Textbooks are a critical source of information and knowledge, and I clearly needed an attitude adjustment. It wasn't easy or instant, but by thinking outside the box, I eventually developed a more positive approach. I began to respect my textbooks. To help you feel similarly, let's, begin, let's become so efficient with our textbooks that you begin to value them more highly. Here's how to save more time. Most students tend to read their textbooks start to finish like they would read a novel. And that's how I originally thought you're supposed to use a textbook. But my results skyrocketed when I shifted more to an outline-driven methodology. I kid you not, this was the game changer. Reading textbooks word for word and hoping to memorize it all both hurts retention and wastes time. Our goal with textbooks need to be to extract and organize key content strategically. In order to do this efficiently, we should just skim our textbooks. Now, I do acknowledge that skimming textbooks isn't ideal for learning in every field or profession, yet I found it works beautifully, especially in liberal arts and general education courses. And as we skim, we need to organize real time, turn that flow of content into a handwritten outline document. You can skip over any of that unnecessary content, research, or examples, because a lot of that filler isn't critical. To summarize, scan each chapter, pull out the relevant information, and outline it using your own form of shorthand. Doing so will save the most amount of time in the long run. It did for me. It also give you, gives you the highest retention rates, better future access when studying, and sets you up for success. The third step is align and combine. When I was studying, I found it challenging to bounce back and forth to my class notes and my textbook outline. Doing so was very inefficient, sometimes confusing, and often stressful. When my frustration reaches peak, 
I just thought, why not just combine them? As college students, we have access to two main sources of information, our professors and our textbooks. Knowledge from both distinct sources can be aligned and combined into one clear and distinct brain trust that answers all of our questions and covers all of our studying needs. I'm suggesting that we rewrite our textbook outline from step two while inserting our class notes in relevant spots from step one. Doing so will create a synergistic, easy to use document that gives us far more valuable results than just from studying from our two separate sources. The fourth step is condense. I have to admit, I learned this step by complete accident. You see, I consider myself somewhat a perfectionist. And while that trait usually gives me more trouble than benefits, this was one of the few fabulous exceptions. I simply just wanted my outline to look and flow better, so I rewrote and condensed it multiple times. I have to share, the unexpected benefits here were unbelievably valuable. When we rewrite and condense our outline, the analysis and simplification of our document both maximizes retention and reviews what's most important. We'll be polishing our outline into the best possible study and reference tools for tests and class assignments. This may seem repetitive, because it is. Embrace the repetition. Repetition is a powerful tool to be used for our greatest advantage. I can say that once I started rewriting and condensing my outline, my performance on test improved while my overall test preparation time decreased. The fifth step is explain the content to others. I love helping people. So whenever someone asked me to help them study, I would lend a hand whenever possible. To better prepare myself for this, I would read my outline multiple times while trying to figure out how best to explain this content as if I was the one teaching it. After doing this multiple times, I realized that whenever I helped someone study, my performance on tests improved drastically. Surprise, teaching improved my own learning. Teaching forces our brains to integrate material more deeply. This not only leads to faster mastery, but also being thoroughly ready for acing our tests. This step became so valuable to me that I eventually formed my own study group that I called my A-team. Having a study group of friends or colleagues provides studying support and accountability, both are which are enormously valuable. If you don't have your own A-team, then connect with a classmate. Discuss information to, to gain clarity and to get on the same page. Together, summarize what could be on the upcoming tests. If you can't connect with a classmate, then teach your pet or your favorite tree or record a video of you teaching yourself the material. However you go about this, read your outline enough times that you practically start to memorize it, then become able to teach the material to others. Once you accomplish this step, you are ready for kicking butt on any test. And that's it, in a nutshell my five-step process to help us study more effectively and efficiently in college. I challenge you to take control of your time, and soon you'll find yourself automatically more successful. Again, here are the steps to improve success measurably. Go to class. Don't rely on secondhand notes. Absorb what the professor is teaching in person. Outline your textbook. Extract key information from this valuable resource effectively and also quickly. Align and combine these two sources. Set yourself up for far better studying later. Condense it all together. This repetition streamlines future access and recall to key information. Explain the content to others. Teaching others content leads to deeper understanding, and that leads to acing your tests. You'll find that these steps fit nicely into the phrase, go ace. Go to class and take notes, outline your textbook, align and combine these two sources, condense it all to together, and explain it to others. That's it. I promise, these simple steps will help save hours of precious time that's often overspent on academics, while simplifying studying and greatly improving learning quality. And that's the first benefit. The secondary benefits are even better. You can use that free time to recover build relationships, network, enjoy hobbies, join athletics, and ultimately have the fun in college you deserve. It doesn't have to be a trade-off. You can have it all. 
the extraordinary opportunity college presents won't last forever. So go ace, have fun, and make it all memorable. Thank you.